What is up, gang? We're out here at one of the most stained ponds in the city. About to meet up with Adele. We're going to fish until sunset. I've been out fishing Texoma all day. Wanted to get an evening session as well. We're going to go ahead, hit this pond right here with some darker color creature baits. Maybe throw some big trench hogs, try and catch a decent fish. As usual, we usually catch small ones, but you know, tonight might be our night. Who's to say? Also, we're going to try and make it out for some frog fish at another spot down the road from here. So even if we don't catch anything crazy here, which I, I think we will, just know you got more to look forward to. So a fun evening of fishing with myself and Adele. First thing I got to do though is rig up my metanium and this endurance rod. I got to get this stuff ready to uh, actually be thrown because it's not together. We actually had a couple different setups. Uh, we took out to Texoma with us this morning, fishing for striper. Now I got to re-rig. See what we got here. Camaro's a little tight fit oh, for a 7.6, but we got an eight foot rod in here as well. So. It's no biggie, no biggie. Little swim bait rod cranked down. Nematanium DC. Now I gotta feed this thing through the guides. And I think we're gonna go Texas rig on this one. This is gonna be our. I'm gonna start with a trench hog. I'm gonna throw these guys right here. Check this out. Super dark color. Bam bug. Game over. Game over. We ain't trying to catch dinks tonight, man. Doinking around trying to set up combos because we didn't prepare ahead of time. Actually, there wasn't much time to prepare. To be honest, we kind of just got off the water. I spent some time editing before we made it out to this place. And so really, it's just been non-stop fishing all day with a lack of sleep from last night. We woke up real early to get up to Texoma. Where's the rest of my tackle? Okay, where were we? Let's get this. Got the Guggen Squad Bass Mafia ice box. I use this thing right here for all my terminal. At least the majority of it. There's probably some stuff I leave behind. We got a bunch of new quarter ounce weights from Wu Tungsten recently. Where's the quarters? These all look like quarters, but they're not. They're deceiving. Probably be fine with less. Throwing a big old heavy hog. Big old heavy hog. You know what I'm gonna do too? Just for you guys. I'm gonna take the time to pin this baby down with a bobber stop. Whenever you peg your weight, it can help you get through some cover. This spot's got plenty of cover. If I break off one Texas rig, I'm not doing this again. It's just, you know, takes an extra five seconds that I'd rather just uh, have it be unpegged sometimes. Where'd I put that weight now? I'm getting way ahead of myself. What is going on? I'm gonna realize when I watch the footage where I just put it. Did I put it back in here or did I put it on the seat? I'm kidding. Okay, well, I'm about to realize, but I'm grabbing another weight that might be the same one. I don't know. Big ol' Guggen Squad hammer hook. This might be a 5 aught. If that's not a 4 aught, it's a 5 aught. Mmm. Put a hog on here, it's gonna look real nice in the water. Palomar knot. Rocking the old floral carbon. I could probably go with pure braid, straight braid at this location, though, because it is, um, very murky. How you guys liking this little pre-fishing tutorial talk. You know, most of us, we fish these T-Rigs all the time. We kind of know what we're doing over here, but anyways, a few little pointers. Don't hurt nobody. So check me out on this weight peg. Now that I've got everything set up, you put your weight peg on first, then you put on your bullet weight or worm weight or whatever. Then you get your hook. You could do EWG. This one's a worm hook. The reason I use worm hooks, is, I'll show you when the plastic's on here actually. Let me bring this peg down. That way, See, now my weight's not flowing freely across the line, and it's going to stay right there pegged up against my plastic. That's going to help me get through some cover, generally speaking. Some people also argue that it's going to help a bass shake it because it's got more leverage with the weight in its mouth when it's shaking. So some people don't peg their weights and are just completely against it. I think just go with the flow. doesn't matter that much, but uh, it can help you get through cover. And yeah, oh, I found the weight. It was on the seat. Yes! Another woo weight, not lost. I'm probably five minutes deep into this video without even filming a single cast. Damn, smells good, dudes. Mmm, trench hog bama bug. This color, I believe this is like Adele's favorite color too. This thing, it slays. The color that you want to be on the bottom when you're creeping your Texas rigs, you, you put that towards the hook when you first start rigging it. That's gonna end up being your color on the bottom. So, I'm just gonna do this uh, darker color on top. Have the green be the bottom. And uh, sometimes if you swim it, it flips around and it's like vice versa, as opposed to just popping it on the bottom. 
to expose that hook into the plastic so it helps me get through cover but also when you go to set that hook it's gonna it's gonna make sure to get that fish make sure that weight is pegged right there up against the hog and that is a beautiful looking Texas rig to hit this pond right here now what I was gonna tell you about that hook last thing before we hit the water bear with me is this is a worm it's more of like a worm style hook I would say it's like a straighter um, the, the hook is almost like straight here now those EWGs tend to go out a little bit and there's benefits there's pros there's cons there's people who will argue that's not the case of today's video I kind of like those slimmer profile hooks because there's less protruding from the plastic whether it makes a difference or not that's not for me to argue with you guys I could care less let's get to fishing yeah, I'm gonna try and keep it somewhat quiet but I decided to bring the trench hog and the shad chatterbait to start it's nice and calm in here, so like I said, I'm going to keep it down for a second, see if I can't get a couple hits before I go crazy. As I made those first couple casts, you guys, I noticed that my line is getting close to backlashing, essentially. Like, it's very loose as it comes off the spool, so I'm imagining when I click this release, it's the, the, the hog is going to drop really fast. It drops pretty fast, so I'm going to tighten up that tension, tighten up that knob right there. I want to get it to where it drops slow. See how it drops slowly now? Now there's way less chance of a backlash and uh, you just kind of have to judge it based on, you know, you want to vary these things based on the wind, if you're casting into the wind or not. You also might vary this if you're trying to get some distance, but right now I'm noticing I'm almost getting a backlash. So by tightening that up a little bit, now that line is going to stay a lot. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what we want. It's going to stay tight to that spool on the cast and you don't feel like you're about to get a bird's nest. It's one more pointer today since we're just throwing them out. Why not, you know? I'm going with the. Uh, I'm going with what they say works, right? With what you say works. Here's what we're rigged up with, guys. Check us out. Adele was kind enough to lend us an ice white fluke since we left all of our shad colored baits at home. We had taken those out to the lake earlier. Anyways, we're gonna try and uh, link up on a spinner bait, which y'all rarely see me throw out here on this cloudy afternoon. No, I wasn't filming. Y'all just missed the catch of a lifetime. <laughs> I wasn't filming for that. Holy smoke! Creeped on over here to this little beaver deal cast it into the brush and the coolest catch of 2020 y'all missed but on the hog look at that wow <laughs> let's get him back in the water and try and get another deal now that we have located where they are at rookie mistake weston it's been happening all day want to grab our stuff and walk it down There we go. Spinner bait. Little guy, but he hit right off the bat. Way out. See if we can't get another one of those real quick. First hit on this bait. Fluke trailer, you see it? Let's go. All right, guys, we tore that one up, but we are headed to a new destination a few minutes down the street. We're going to go have some fun, try and tear up another pond, top water style. Probably throwing out the frog, maybe a plopper. It's uh, undetermined. I'd like to catch some on the new Guggen Squad frog. It would actually be my first catches on it since they came out uh, after the summertime, and I never really threw a frog once they were launched. So this is going to be cool, man. I'm pretty pumped. Let's go try and catch our first GS frogfish. All right, guys, we just rolled up. Uh, what do we got? Adele's getting in here. I think with the chatterbait to start, I'm going straight for the frog box. And you know what's got the bass name on it this evening. Let's go. Had mentioned it. <laughs> well, that was fast. Adele pulling one in right off the bat on the chatterbait. He said he waked on it like a topwater. Well, that's what I want, because that's what I'm throwing. <laughs> and that was a white chatterbait? White chatterbait. Sick, dude. Shad chatterbait. He did munch it. And so I'm trying to get in here with that same color. Just froggy hoggy doggy. Yo, wait a minute. There's some blue on there. That's holographic. That's limited edition. Bro, this is, Yo. This is that $100 Tarzan. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dude, the action is unreal. Okay. One just burst over there at the top. Oh, dog, I'm over there. I won't even know if. It hits my frog. Oh! God, I don't think I do. I Oh, he was on there for a second. Bro, <laughs> such a far hook set. Wait. He's not on there. That was intense. 
yo. <laughs> oh, god damn. I really thought I had him for a second. Gave him a little time. You can have your spot back. I was just casting while you were switching. But Dill's like, I ain't got the time. <laughs> Dude, that whole area over there looks so good and calm. A little sprinkle top water bite. That would be nice. <laughs> All right, he's okay too. Oh, he's off. Yo. Oh no, he's he's, he's oh. He looked halfway decent. Oh, he's good, dude. Yeah, for this place. Oh, no. oh, no. Wow. Okay. Adele's pulling in all the fish on the frog, dude. What's going on? Give me a chance over here. Oh, I just got. Did it... Yes, I got him. No. It's a little guy, dude. <laughs> dude what? Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Getting all these mofos. Oh my Whoa. Gosh, He's big guys. enough to eat that thing. All right, guys, no dice for me on the GS Frog this evening. It's a walking style as opposed to what Adele is catching them on left and right, the popping style, which I'm used to. I just always grab those like cheap, uh, what's that brand? Mm, dum, 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 Booyah, I think, from Walmart. And I've caught them on that before, but I really want to try some new stuff tonight. So aside from that frog, which I don't have the confidence in just yet, I'm going to throw this new popper, plopper, whopper plopper, uh, that I haven't ever thrown, I don't think. We got this off Carl's recently. We have multiple different sizes of whopper ploppers. And then we got this little guy right here black color we're gonna see if this thing can perform right here as the Sun is setting in the areas uh, that are not as grassy of this pond let's see what happens man uh, I don't know cuz on Carl's they're cheaper with that membership and that's like I bet you this one is eight bucks or less well I don't know I'm not getting hit on this old top water I might have to go and resort to that uh, swim jig Oh, oh, Hello, dude. got him wow. at the last second, little guy. <laughs> First top water fish. Got the top water bite, baby. They are hogs out here. Nothing but tanks. All right, there we go. This one could be okay. He hit it good. Oh, he might be all right. Let's see what we got here. Biggest fish of the day? Might be. All right, there we go. And we got that one on camera. That's what we're here for. That's why we're filming. <laughs> Grass hero, that's why they call it that. Look at that right there, ripping it straight through the thick boys. Got the braid, the Brady Bunch. Bluegill colored uh, swim jig, grass hero with a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer on the back and a natural coloration. Gonna get him back in the water and on his merry way because I got more fish to catch if they're gonna hit before the light fades too much for this GoPro. Yes, that was first cast out into the open with it, but. This grass all in this thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm. the swim jig's about to be hot. Got him in the thick stuff, guys. That's why you throw the grass hero right there. Ripped him right out of the grass. That was dope. Guys, we were in the thick stuff. Cruising right through it. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Bass number two on the swim jig in about three minutes. Let's see if we can't get a few more. We are on a speed mission right now, guys. No time to waste. Let's go. Follow up cast. And I was just popping it like this. Getting it through that thick stuff, creating vibration, getting grass off of it at the same time, popping that skirt. Just a consistent reel and pop with the rod tip has been working so good for me with these swim jigs through thick grass. That was an awesome bite. Probably the most fun bite of the day. What's so crazy about this swim jig is how good it works in ponds that most people would have no clue what to fish with. Like you can just sift through this grass by doing that pop motion as you bring it in. And like half the time I rip straight through the stick stuff. Oh, I just had a bite and he came off because I'm trying to talk to you guys. Dang, I just had a bite and I didn't set the hook. But what happens is you can get right in this grass, work through it. It's so thick and look, I don't think there's anything on it. Okay, there is a little bit, but I'm telling you what, four out of five times this swim jig is not picking up nothing. 
it's just insane working it through this grass out here well i did get a bite with it in a place where you're not throwing much but a frog you see what i'm saying at least from this angle of the pond so you can hit certain areas of ponds that most people would never hit it's just it's killer man got to grab some grass heroes if you don't throw slim jigs don't think of just open water you know like if it was open water maybe i'd be throwing a chatter bait you know what i'm saying maybe i'd be throwing a i don't know a spinner bait maybe i'd be throwing a fluke a, a fluke is probably not going to work here either you really want that extra vibration of popping this thing and that weight helping you get through the grass so this swim jig is just a tool of mass destruction all right guys light is all but faded we better get out of here that was super cool Oh, meow, meow, meow. All right, guys, quick and home recap. We just got back to the crib, and we caught fish on a variety of different baits in tonight's fun vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You completely missed the trench hog catch. I'm still not over it, but I've been fishing all day, lack of sleep. I'm ready to get to bed. Home, wash my hands for at least 20 seconds, and ready to maybe do the whole thing tomorrow again. Film a video or two. Catch y'all then. Peace. <gasps>